Morning YouTubers. You're probably wondering what this rusty material is doing in my hands and that's a great question. Today's video we're going to cover the topic of can you weld over rust. Now this is far from the most rusty material that I've ever welded on. As a matter of fact this is, I mean it's a little bit more than surface rust. As you can see it doesn't really come off that's for sure. It'd take, it would take quite a bit of grinding to clean this up. But rather than doing any grinding or any prep work, I'm just going to set this on here, tack it, and we're going to weld one side with 6010 and the other side with 7018. And we're going to see with a cut and etch what happens. Now I have cut and etch clean metal with new rods and everything, and we'll be doing a comparison between that and this to really see what, if any, effect the rust and poor material prep has. So let's get into it. So for material size, we are dealing with quarter inch, which is 6.35 millimeter. And we're going to be using eighth inch rods, which are 3.2 millimeters, I believe you guys call it. So we're going to use eighth inch, 3.2 millimeter, 6010 and 7018. So let's get this tacked up and go from there. So I already know this is going to weld terribly, but that's not the point of this. We're going to learn what happens. Boy, tacking that end was tough. It just did not want to stay lit on there. Rust was a little thick end. Didn't help that there was paint on here either. All right, well, I'll use this side for the 6010. We're running 90 amps. So that welded, I don't know, it seemed to have excessive amounts of spatter. And the molten puddle, surprisingly, seemed to like hang back way far back. Not really sure what that was about. The other thing, if you look at the bead appearance, I don't think this was grease soaked at all, but I didn't prep it. And you look at this like black line, I'm not sure if I boiled grease out of it or what, but bead appearance, at least here, pretty terrible. So what I'm gonna do now is just let this sit. Not gonna prep anything. I'm gonna let it cool down. It's gonna be five, 10 minutes. And then I'm going to run a pass of 7018 on the back. All right, so I let that cool down. I actually put a fan on it to help it a little bit since it was taking a while. And now what we're going to do is just run an eighth inch, 3.2 millimeter, 7018 on it. Then I will cut it in half and etch it and we'll see what we got. All right, that actually ran better, I think, than the 6010 by a pinch, but the puddle kind of seemed really sluggish. I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe it. It had a nice length to it, but it just kind of really seemed focused on staying exactly where that arc was, where the molten puddle was, and it did not seem like it wanted to wet out very well. But I'll tell you what, had I let that cool anymore, it would have been a definite slag peel, peeler, but that bead actually looks really good. I'm actually shocked, at least on face value. All right, well, I'll uh, cool this off, cut it in half, and come back with a cut and etch. All right, well, if the proof is in the pudding, we have the pudding in front of us. Now I cut and etched this, let it cool down. I did hit this with a wire wheel just so we can inspect the weld to get a better idea of what's going on. Now this is far from the scabbiest material I've ever used or welded on. You can see the wire wheel did clean it off somewhat. There's still quite a bit of pitting. Same thing here. I'll flip it over. Same deal, but not really that scabby a material and it's thick which does help but we'll see how much of a difference it made by not prepping it now 
just to look at this, and I'll bring it up. The bead to me looks a little bit on the cold side. I was keeping a little bit tighter of an arc than I probably should, so it's a little bit, like, not roped up, but the top is a little bit peaked. I'd rather have it, like, flatter if you look at the profile. So a little bit longer of an arc gap would have helped that. So we'll see where the penetration is. But that looks pretty decent overall. Same thing down here. The spatter is a little bit more than normal or about normal. When welding this, the odd thing was, so this rod, the 6010, the puddle, as I move forward, didn't seem to want to follow the rod. It was like hanging back further, which is kind of odd because I was running a little bit tighter of an arc and maybe a little bit on the colder side. I would have liked five, maybe 10 more amps on this, but it really, the puddle was welding like I was hotter than I really was. I don't know, it was very odd. The 7018, actually, I gotta say, ran pretty freaking good for this. I mean, you look at that, the top toe line has like a weird, and it's not going to come out that good, but it's almost like a weird profile to it. Let's see if I can get it to come out. Eh, you don't really see it that much. Like it just kind of wetted out poorly onto the plate, but it's actually not that bad considering this was all mill scale and just left out in salt and water to rust. So better than I would have honestly expected. Oh, by the way, all of these welds, both of these are made with the Harbor Freight Titanium 225. So I did not run my Miller Dynasty with this. So let's do the cut and etch right here and let's look at that. Well, here's the pudding. <laughs> the 7018 on the left has really good penetration. The overall profile looks like every other 7018 that I've done a cut and etch on. I'm kind of surprised that's the case because the amount of rust that was on that bottom part of the upright plate made me think that it might actually affect the penetration or cause some goofy things with it, but I don't see any evidence here. Now the 6010 on the right, different story there for penetration. That really got in there quite a long ways far more than I expected based on the bead appearance. You can see the bead is essentially a 45 degree angle and then in the very center is a little like <laughs> nipple or something. Hopefully <laughs> demonetized for saying that. But anyways, kind of an odd profile. I would have liked to have ran that 6010 maybe 5, 10 amps hotter. But I'll tell you what, it didn't really make any difference in the penetration, very acceptable. Both beads had a crusty toe line, I would say, not the worst. But, I mean, realistically, always prep your material. But if you don't, hey, stick will weld through it. But I'll tell you what, I'd rather have 6010 and 7018 unless it's going to be some critical job. And if it's a critical job, you're prepping your material. So there you have it. So I got to say that, honestly, the results were a little bit different than I would have expected for both rods. I'm actually shocked at how well that 7018 ran over this. I mean, had it been scabbier material, I think it would have been worse and it, the bead appearance wouldn't have been as good. But honestly, I would say welding over, you know, mill scale and rust, if you have to do it, I mean, obviously 6010 would be a far better choice. You saw the results. But either way, I wouldn't be too hesitant to run either one of them. I mean, especially if the welds turn out this nice with the 7018. I mean, and that's something that I sort of mentioned earlier, but when you're uh, welding with 6010, getting that slag out of this tow line is going to be really difficult. And then you're going to have slag on the bead where the ripples are. The problem with all of that is, is that if you buff it with a wire wheel, you're probably still not going to get it all off. And when you prime and paint it, that flux, that little pieces of flux on that 6010 will eventually spall off of there, leaving bare weld and then it'll rust. So if you're doing like some kind of scabby trailer repair and hitting it with primer and paint or whatever, something like that, the 7018 is going to be far easier to prep 
for paint and will the paint will actually adhere to it unlike like all of this little stuff in here like good luck getting all of that out and eventually that will spall off that metal as this gets hot and cold so it's just something to think of anyways hopefully you learned something and until next time guys thanks for sticking around